Caps win six to four versus the Montreal Canadiens. So for the first like eight or nine minutes of this game, I was like, ah, you know, I thought coming into this game sort of yesterday afternoon, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a fun game. I don't really understand the Montreal Canadiens as an organization. I, I don't get them. You've got Brendan Gallagher, you've got Galchenyuk, you've got uh, Houdon even, you've got Carey Price, and yet your record looks like that? I'm confused, what's happening? Do you just have a bunch of different parts and it doesn't come together as a machine? I feel like that's what's happening. Is that what's happening? I was a little bit like, okay, so they're gonna score some goals, we're gonna score some goals, and we'll see who comes out on top. And that's kind of what happened. But for the first nine minutes, I was like, oh God, is this gonna be like the Philly game? I don't, because the, the first bit of the game was crazy. It was freaking crazy. Nobody could hold on to possession for more than two seconds, I swear to God. Um, Ovi falls over on a breakaway. I was like, what? Oh, ice is slippery. Carey Price has some fancy glove saves, holy shit. Fucking robs a couple guys absolutely blind and I was like, okay, maybe I was wrong about this being a fun game. This might be a game that's completely out of control. And that first goal uh, by Alex Galchenyuk, yeah, that was completely out of control. Uh, Niski and Orlov are both out of position and completely get burned completely burned. And I'm like, you're a top defensive pairing. What is it that you're doing? And then Gallagher scores another goal. But Jonathan Duran was offside on the original entry. I had the NBC Sports Washington feed, but then I was, you know, my um, research for the video this morning was Hockey Night in Canada. And um, they seemed a little confused, but I was like, he's definitely offside. He's definitely offside. The puck entirely crossed the line and he's definitely in ahead of the play. That is for real, guys. That's real. So that goal doesn't count. And there's no reason not to challenge at this point because even if you lose your timeout, you've gotten your guys a minute to reset. And that's what happened. After that offsides challenge, everybody was much more in control. Logan Shaw goes off at 10.35 for a high stick. Nicholas Backstrom sets up behind the goal line for the power play and bumps it to Kuz who bumps it back to John Carlson while Kuz is looking at Alexander Ovechkin, which creates a little bit of a cheat. Carlson gives it back to Kuznetsov, who pushes towards the net and takes the shot. He has space, he has ice, Carey Price has no chance. So that one's in the back of the net, perfect. 1-1 one, one hockey game, okay. Perfect, Nicholas Backstrom has his first point of the night on a secondary assist. This is an ongoing theme tonight. Approximately four minutes later, Tom Wilson is out with Andre Burakovsky and Nicholas Backstrom. And I don't know if this is like a broken change, but Price is trying to bypass the forecheck, sends the puck over to Ben from behind the net, but it rolls over Ben's stick. Back he's after it, gets it out to Tom, who goes to one knee and just fires it at the net short side. Uh, okay, all right, thanks Tom. I sort of didn't realize the goal had happened for a second. I was like, where's the puck? It's in the back of the net. All right, Tom. Two minutes later, Tom is out again with Andre Burakovsky and Nicholas Backstrom. That's not a line that we normally see. Nikki's doing work behind the net as he usually does. Um, pushes it along the boards. Berkey gets it off the boards while Nikki is still getting himself open, which is awesome. Right into open ice. He knows that Tom is behind him. Burkowski bumps it to Backstrom, who sick. Holy shit. Fucking dope ass. No look pass behind him by about five feet. Uh, to Tom, who doesn't even take a second to think, just snaps it off of his stick and into the back of the net. Tom Wilson has two goals in two minutes. Tell me more about how he's just a goon. <laughs> Go ahead. The first period was definitely the most exciting part of this game. Uh, Nicholas Backstrom had three points in the first period. Go ahead, Nikki. So we come back for the second period, four minutes and 52 seconds into the second period. The fourth line of Jay Beagle, Alex Chason, and Chandler Stevenson are in the offensive zone, but the Habs are set up. They've, they've got themselves covered. Dimitri Olaf just throws one in on net and Beagle's right there to tip it in. Love that man, nicest man in hockey, gets himself a goal. 
The next goal with two seconds left in the second period belongs to the Habs. Ooh, Dmitry Orlov gets burned by his own strategy. So he threw it on net and Jay got the tip earlier on in the period. This one, Orlov tries to clear out of the zone and doesn't. Doesn't even make the blue line. Jamie Ben just throws it in on net. Charlie Houdon. Uh, he tips it in and then everybody starts talking about maybe it was a high stick, but Houdon's only like five foot 11. So um, I don't think I'm sitting here like that's not a large man and he didn't raise his stick all that high. It was it was like here-ish on his body. So I don't think it was above the crossbar guys. I think that's a good goal. Turns out I'm right as per usual. <laughs> So we go into the third period, four to two, Washington Capitals. And I'm like, okay, I can probably stop paying attention, right? Nope, there's four goals in the third period. Two for the Washington Capitals and two for the Montreal Canadiens. One minute into the third period, Jonathan Drouin goes off for hooking. Not 10 seconds into that power play, Nicholas Backstrom gets set up on the half wall. Cheats a little towards Ovi, but Kuz is standing there back door and throws it on net. Kuz tips it in past Carey Price's skate. That's two goals for Evgeny Kuznetsov too. <laughs> Three minutes later, Andre Burakovsky is doing work along the wall, which always worries me a little bit because I'm like, win a board battle for once in your life well he does gets it out towards i think he's doing jacob yarabek i don't think he's doing Jakob. is he whatever jj i'm gonna call him jj jacob yarabek who just throws it on that and it goes in i'm confused oh it bounced off of somebody got it and i'm sitting there hoping that it bounced off of a montreal canadian so that jj gets credit for it because like they're his whole team <laughs> <laughs> that would make me happy. But it turned out to be Osh. It bounced off of Osh's knee, so technically Osh gets credit for this goal. So that's five goals in six games. Oh yeah, that magical ritual I did, still holding. But that's the end of the cap scoring. Sort of felt like they took their foot off the gas a little bit for the last 10 minutes of the game. Um, unfortunate. I guess it's fortunate that they were playing the Montreal Canadiens rather than, for instance, the Winnipeg Jets, who like took them to school when they did that. Charlie Houdon throws one in on net at 928 and uh, bounces off the back of Nicholas Backstrom's leg. And I'm like, can we count that as another point for Nikki? <laughs> Cause that's five. At 1705 into the third period, Alexander Ovechkin goes off for slashing. Babe, could you not? I love you. And Brendan Gallagher is set up in the Brendan Gallagher spot right in front of the crease and tips in a uh, shot from Jonathan Drouin. Every goal in this game was either scored on the power play or was a tip in. Good job, guys. Looks like playoff hockey. So takeaways from this game, stop taking your foot off the gas with 10 minutes left in the game. Just try and score more goals. Just try and score more goals. Stop stopping. Because like I said, a team like the Winnipeg Jets will make you pay. Philadelphia Flyers who if the season ended today we would have in the first round of the playoffs yuck yuck next up the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden that's gonna be essential to play a a really good road game a simple road game I'm not sure what to think of the Rangers anymore after the trade deadline For one thing we haven't played them since then so i haven't really had a position but we're playing the rangers and then we're playing the rangers so i'm sure i will have a position after that i'm probably going to hate them again going forward paying attention to what's going on you know in the fandom and amongst the pundits and everything it seems like this is a legit goalie controversy and i'm like this is not a controversy as long as Braden holby is not fit to play this is grubauer's net as long as Braden holby is not fit to play no it seemed to work out this time so again versus the rangers i'm gonna wish for just a win okay this has been kate your salty caps fan i haven't been all that salty today considering the final score uh, a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, just a dash of salt today. A pinch, really. And I'll see you guys after the Rangers game. Bye.